Hey guys, Eric here. Welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're going to be talking about My Adventures with Superman Season 2, Episode 6, otherwise titled The Machine Who Would Be Empire. So careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with My Adventures with Superman. This season, you've been warned. Let's get into it. Actually, before we get into it, a couple things. I want to give a shout out to you guys for really supporting the last video. You came through. I said, like, I'm loving the show. I love talking about it. But YouTube keeps suppressing the content or it's not getting out to people or people are not interested in it and you guys just blew it up the video did extremely well compared to the last two videos so i'm very happy to continue my reviews for my adventure with superman hopefully you guys show love on this video as well because i think this episode really does deserve it and i think my score is going to reflect that secondly if you're enjoying this content you're enjoying my adventure with superman and you're enjoying coming over here on my channel and talking about this with other people who are also having a good time with it uh subscribe to the channel become part of the eric first leave a like on this video and leave a comment down below I can't wait to hear and see or read, <laughs> not here, read what you guys are thinking about the show. All right, I have a bunch of notes over here and we're going to go through these and um, get my thoughts on it. So Clark awakens to discover that Carr has brought him into outer space. He's on a strange ship in the middle of nowhere. He's nowhere near Earth. Uh, Kara then reveals that she wants to build a new empire together to be their real home, Krypton. Now, Clark refuses to conquer Earth, so Carl wants to get through to Clark by wanting him to meet her father and show him what they built together in the name of Krypton. So using like this thought-projecting device, Carl shows Krypton before it was destroyed, and Clark seems like, oh, this is actually really cool. Um, it's a very advanced technology. Obviously, it's from Krypton. They brought other planets in the fold. Carl is happily showing Clark some of the stuff she loved to do but fights back against the idea that she's just lonely. And this is a really good moment between the two of them. And actually, one of the things I loved about this episode in general is the connection that these two characters had almost immediately. There's this sort of familiar bond thing that's going on early on. And it does show what I suspected is that Kara is doing a lot of these things uh, because she's being told she has to do them. Uh, even though she's a fantastic warrior and clearly she's been trained uh, deep down inside, that's not the character that she is. It's not the kind of person that she is. And so I suspected this in last episode. And right here in the beginning of this episode, we sort of get the the reveal that, that is, in fact, the case. Now, uh, Clark tries to tell Kara about the new home he's made on Earth and uses the thought projector to show a bit of his past. I thought this was really cool. It was a very sweet moment in the episode. So he's playing catch with his dad. Kara only sees the moment as humans trying to get Clark to weaken his strength and hide his true self rather than the moment of loving family time that it was. So she's basically saying like, you know, this sort of echoes the idea that people in our world, in the real world, can't be who they really are around certain people. They have to suppress who they are. And so she's trying to pull on that emotional connection. She asks if anybody really cared about him. And Clark briefly thinks about Lois upon finding Kara's secret stash of items. Clark finds out Kara not only met Jimmy, but might have a crush on him as well and so i thought that was a really good scene because we get to see kind of what is driving um clark in the series and this is an early version of superman we're meeting him very early in his career so we're seeing the emotional bonds that he has with different characters and what sort of pushes him further because we know he has that power that you guys told me well, in the comment section, I knew that there was like this electrical element to superman that has been done over the years but you guys were telling me there's other ways it's been used in the comics so i have to look it up and find out some uh you know some more information about that uh eventually i guess but i'm kind of i kind of want to wait now i want to see where the season takes us with this new power and we'll talk more on that in a moment uh but i love the way they brought that all together and then tied it back to Kara meeting jimmy uh being confused <laughs> that he was the leader uh of earth and all of that so i thought that was quite interesting so yeah just some some cool moments uh, that were great character building moments. And I thought that was really strong in this episode. And at this point, I was wondering, like, how are we going to jump back and forth between the characters on Earth and uh, Kara and uh, Clark? And the answer to that is we didn't really. And I thought that was a really great choice for this episode. Uh, now, Kara's kept mementos of planets she's been to, but is hiding them from her father because he only wants her to be a proper warrior of the Empire. Clark then asks to see what a planet this Empire actually looks like, and Carr decides to take him to Thanagar. Now, when I heard her mentioning planets, and I, and I heard Thanagar immediately, I was like, okay, are we going to see any of these, or are they just Easter eggs? And they went well beyond that in this episode. And as a fan, freaking amazing seeing that happen. 
Uh, seeing this, her father sends out an army of robots to intercept them, uh, needing to clear an asteroid field on the way. Uh, and I wrote down here like asteroid star, like a little asterisk or whatever. I don't were, were they asteroids? I don't. It was like floating cheese or something in space. I don't know. It didn't seem like asteroids to me, but it seems like other websites are calling it asteroids. So. I don't know. Uh, they have to clear these things out or whatever. Clark and Kara head out into space where Kara teaches Clark that as a Kryptonian, he can breathe in space. And I was wondering about that because with the mask on, I'm like, does he need that? Or is that a redundancy for what he can do? Because I was very curious, like, because in different iterations of Superman or Supergirl or whatever, sometimes they can do things that they can't do in other iterations so i wasn't sure if that was the case but i was happy to know that it was and he doesn't need the mask but it was a cool thing like i was like this is really cool like being able to create a breathable mask if they need one um and the two two of them playfully bond by allowing each other to show off more of their respective strength and this is where uh things get a little weird in terms of like how superman's powers work like this blue energy that he has so when a huge asteroid, again, uh, this cheese ball thing, comes and hits Kara, Clark reaches a new level by glowing with an electric energy and punches through it and impresses Kara. She can't become stronger in the same manner. It was very Dragon Ball to me, uh, very anime where characters just, they either change form or they change color or something. They glow when they're getting ready to do something really powerful. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And I'm curious what you guys think about that. So let me know in the comments below, do you like this idea of... Superman having like a power up thing when he uses his power. I'm, I'm curious if anybody else likes it or doesn't like it. Now reaching Thanagar, Carr and Clark see the planet has been completely destroyed. Carr is shocked to see it in such a state. And something starts to take over her before Clark snaps her out of it. Like she's looking at this wall with this stuff that's like brainwashing her. Uh, she seems just surprised to find out the people in cities are no longer there. And her memories are scrambled. She knows something wrong. But soon enough, uh, her father's machines find them. Now, heading to the main ship is revealed that Kara's father is actually Primus Brainiac. And I was like, okay, what is this? Because it clearly was not a version of Brainiac that we're familiar with. Like, very different. I don't think I've ever seen this design for Brainiac before with, like, the, the weird, like, boomerang-shaped head and stuff. I, I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Every iteration of Brainiac that I have ever seen in the comics has been sort of a play off of that traditional like green humanoid alien design. Uh, they played with that a lot over the years and I've had some favorites that weren't exactly the same as the classic, but this is a big uh, deviation from that. So I'm curious if you guys like the design or not. I thought it was cool, but I know some people are not going to like it. Now Clark's surprised to see that it's not Carr's actual father, Zorel, and is apparent that things are going South quickly, Brainiac explains that once Krypton's artificial intelligence and every facet of the Empire's technology, it is now basically the only thing left from it. I thought this was a really cool explanation for Brainiac and all of this stuff. I think that's a really nice way to tie everything together. Brainiac then wants to show Clark the kind of Empire he wants to make, and uh, Clark touches Brainiac's hand. And this is where I was like, what's going to happen? <laughs> is he going to get brainwashed? Uh, something going to like trick him and fool him? What, what are we going to see here? Uh, the Clark then finds himself awakened in a new room with three aliens in front of him. Brainiac explains that with a mind scan of Kryptonian consciousness, he's essentially brought fighters from the Empire's world to life through holograms. And uh, I like this. I, I thought this was neat. It was like a danger room thing for my adventures with Superman. And so for me, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, I have some questions here about the next part of this that I think I, I've seen other people talking about it. So I'm curious if you guys have the same questions. Um, these aliens include one with Green Lantern powers. Uh, I think it was a dark side parademon. I think it was. And a Thanagarian warrior. Each one of them fought back against the Empire, but now their pain is being used to train Krypton's new fighters, new warriors. Unfortunately, Clark has to fight and eventually defeat them all. Now, my question is, we find out that Brainiac wants Clark's powers, the, the new powers that he has, these these energy powers and we're not truly sure exactly how those work yet at least i'm not again i'm totally comfortable with waiting to see how they're going to play out but exactly what they are will determine if brainiac's plan makes sense to me follow me with this one so brainiac was already conquering worlds with kara with supergirl he was already doing that and clearly he's got the capability of subjugating kryptonians 
which in the lore of the comics are some of the most powerful beings in the entire universe. So if he's capable of doing that with a Kryptonian, one Kryptonian at the very least, it seems to me like he's already got the power to, to, you know, take over and destroy worlds if he wants to. So what does he need Superman's power for? If I have to go out on a limb here, it's because there's something bigger at play that we're not aware of that he needs Superman's power for. That's what I think. Clearly something bigger at play that has not been revealed yet. And I'm totally comfortable with waiting for that to be revealed. But I am curious. Now, this is where Clark discovers that Brainiac is the one that actually destroyed Thanagar, but Brainiac still says Clark doesn't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know. I'm in the same boat. Uh, but he doesn't want Clark's mind anyway. He wants his body. However, he uses red sun energy to depower Clark, so that way he can keep him from destroying the robots and possibly him. Uh, when Carr finally gets to room to find out what's happening, Brainiac chastises her and gets her to think she's making so many mistakes, start to see the pieces come together. Uh, how we got to where we are with Supergirl. Now, she just wants to know what's really happening, but Brainiac brainwashes her to get her to comply, and we get to see that it's not really a memory wipe. It's like a memory suppression. So her not remembering things doesn't mean those memories are gone. It's they have to be triggered to be brought back so she can actually remember what happened because we see how that plays out. So I guess some things are buried more than others. Now, she gets these memory flashes revealing what happened, and she starts to head to the planets that she's been to and finds out that they've all been destroyed. So all of this was wiped from her mind. Uh, back at Thanagar, she sees a mural on the wall, the one that was brainwashing her earlier. Um, and it's give, it's a block to her brain, basically. It's been revealed to be an image of her bringing destruction to the planet. Suddenly she remembers and she sees herself easily destroying the planets with the echoes of screams in the background. And she flies off. She's upset. She's hurt. She's emotional. And um, she doesn't really know what to do. And she gets bumped by a ship flying through in a wormhole. And guess what? It is Jimmy, Lois, Monshore, Mala, and the brain. And then we close out the episode. And I have to say, this is almost, almost as perfect an episode you could ask for for My Adventures with Superman. It had everything I wanted. Just the right amount of comedy, character building, heart, emotional beats. The pacing was right. Storytelling was really good. Brainiac is terrifying. Um, special effects artwork, animation, all of that, check, check, check. Everything that I could have asked for in an episode of My Adventure with Superman was provided this week. And I think it's very obvious to me that this is a this interesting storyline is more interesting because it takes us out of Earth and puts us into space, and we get to see a lot of things that we wouldn't normally see uh, when the characters are Earthbound. And to me, that's that's really interesting. I don't mind the Earth stuff. Again, I've enjoyed the series. So for me, it's not a big deal. But this was really good. It was very, very, very well done. So I have to give him credit for that. So for me, it's a score of 9.5 out of 10. I think this was an absolutely stellar episode of My Adventure with Superman. Almost a perfect episode. Almost a perfect episode. The only thing that I'm knocking it for, the only thing, is that it's not quite clear to me what these powers that Superman has does. Now, I'm taking off that half point because I don't know if it's if I'm supposed to understand it now or if they're going to explain it later. I'm not clear the intention of that because outside of that, I think this was an absolutely perfect episode. I think this is one of the best versions of Supergirl we've had Um you know, outside of what we got in comic books, like in, in animation and live action. One of the best versions, very different from the other animated versions. I like the idea that they're sort of using her like how they would use Zod. And she's extremely powerful, which I think is really smart for them to do as well. So I'm loving all of this. And I actually think her story with how she looks at Brainiac as a father and how she's been brainwashed and now she's got to break out of that and deal with the ramifications of destroying worlds. All of these things to me are exciting as a viewer. And so I can't wait to see where we're going to go from there with all of this. But now it is your time to jump down in the comment section and tell me 
if you liked or disliked this episode of my adventures with superman do you agree with my score would you have scored it higher would you have scored it lower what did you think of all of the story elements and the beats we talked about in this review let me know in the comments below Thank you guys again for the support. Make sure if you are enjoying this to leave a like, leave a comment, show me that you like this so we can finish out the season real strong with my adventures with Superman. So that being said, I'll see everybody in the live streams this week and I will see you in the next video. Take care.